Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimby Camper. So we're gonna walk through the installation of the Power Watchdog today. I installed one of the hardwired versions of these. I've been really happy with it. You know, before I've been using the Progressive Industries, I've been using a 30 amp surge protector. I have the 30 amp and the 50 amp. You know, whenever we first bought our fifth wheel, it's 50 amp and I thought, oh, I'm gonna need that 50 amp. So I went and got the 50 amp. Now, all of you that know me know that I hardly ever go anywhere that has 50 amp service. Because of this, I hardly ever use the 50 amp cord. Even if I'm somewhere that does have 50 amp service, I'm so used to using 30 amp service that I just use the 30 amp cord. And so I have a system for that. I'll probably go through all that, you know, eventually. But the, the, the thing that we're going to talk about today is the power watchdog. You know, the progressive industries, 30 amp, I never had an issue with it. But when we were in Michigan a few months ago, it just stopped working. Now the million dollar question is this is, did it quit working because it's a piece of junk? Or did it quit working because it did its job and protected the RV and took the hit? So, you know, that's the strange thing about this predicament. I have no idea if it was a good investment or not. I did take it apart and there wasn't any signs of any obvious damage, so who knows? Going back to the point that we don't go a lot of places with 50 amp service, you know, I'm not the type that goes to a lot of RV resorts. Number one, I'm too cheap. And number two, they usually have a smaller site preference than I prefer. You know, the, the sites are just so small, you're always real close to your neighbors. I don't really like that. So I just got used to using the equipment that I had from before. So I guess we'll just talk about how I do usually hook up to a 30 amp service. So I do use the 30 amp surge protector traditionally. I use a 30 amp extension cord that I use for my main power cord that I used as an extension cord with my previous camper. I also use a 30 to 50 amp power adapter that screws directly into the 50 amp service of the RV inlet. And I've just got used to this and it satisfies our power needs. I only have one rooftop AC, but we did add the portable air conditioner as a secondary air unit. And you know, we've always done fine with this. Now with that being said, I have actually talked to the guys down at the RV soft start and they're gonna send me a soft start for my AC. You know, you can run two rooftop ACs if you get those soft starts in there, but this is kind of the way that we went so that we can get around that personally. Now the reason that the portable AC works for me and it has a heat pump in it too, is I actually get that power for that unit from the 15 amp service on the power pole. So that doesn't affect our 30 amp service at all. Like I said, I've got so used to this system that even when we're at a 50 amp service, I always use the 30 amp service. I don't hardly ever use 50. About the only time that I ever used my 50 amp cord to tell you the truth is was I'm mooch docking at my dad's house. He's got a 30 amp cord, but it's a little bit too far um, for the 30 amp service to reach my RV with my main cord. And so for that, I used the 50 amp cord with a dog bone just as an extension cord. So personally, I decided if I was gonna replace my surge protector, I would rather install one that's hardwired that way I don't have to worry about it getting stolen or anything like that. It's not outside in the weather. I contacted Power Watchdog because I know a lot of people are very happy with their products. And they stated their 50 amp unit would function properly with 30 amp service connected to it. I decided to order one of their units. So I placed an order on Amazon thinking that I was getting a great deal on the open box item. However, when the item came, it was the plug-in version, not the hardwired version. So I had to send it back then I had to order one at full price. Yes, I did buy this product with my own money. Uh, it wasn't sent for me for a review or anything like that. I did pay for it. I saw a post in the 29 RKS group that I have that someone installed, uh, installed it in their cabinet where I'd previously had my plug for my air conditioner and I thought that worked pretty good. So I think I'm gonna go that route. So Ron, I wanna say thanks because I used your design. Um, you did it a lot prettier, but I still got the job done. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how we installed it here today. And you know, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it, it ended up, it wasn't too hard. The biggest thing was a little technical difficulty that we'll talk about here in a minute. But 
you know, it wasn't bad at all. So the first thing that I had to do is I had to remove the panel that I was going to mount it to, as well as the outlet that I had in the panel I had to take out. I actually moved that outlet, which was from a power inlet, because it only powered my air conditioner and heat pump. I moved that actually to the slide. I actually put another inlet in because I didn't want to, you know, run the wire underneath the camper to the slide. And so that's really the only place that I had, and I actually liked that a lot better. Wish I would have did it to start with. So after I got the panel out, I traced the outline from the power watchdog onto the panel, and then I used a jigsaw to cut it out. If you have access to a scroll saw, it's going to give you a nicer, better looking cut. Um, but really, you know, it's behind the cabinet. It looks fine. And my jigsaw did okay, but it, I would use a scroll saw if you had access to it. Now the power watchdog comes with two metal brackets that screw directly to it. And traditionally these are used to screw it to a mounting surface. Um, on the back side. So you have those metal brackets, they stick on the back and they have screw holes and that stick out on the sides and then you put the uh, screws into those screw holes and just screw it right into the wall. However, Ron's idea here I thought was great. And so these brackets, I didn't know if the brackets came with it or not, but they did. So you do use these brackets. However, for mounting the format that we're gonna use, we needed to protrude slightly out of the front of the cabinet but not enough so that the cabinet door wouldn't shut. So for this, I went to the hardware store and got some long bolts, washers, lock washers, and wing nuts that I fit through the pre-made holes in the metal brackets. I lined these up where they would pass through and marked and drilled the holes there in that wooden panel. And then I used some half inch PVC that I had lying around and I put over the bolt behind the panel so that that way when the bolt was tightened, it would tighten over the length of PVC and when it was tied, it would leave the unit protruding slightly out of the front for the look that I was going for. The install was going great so far until we got to the wiring. I wired everything up just like the direction said on the picture. The input was on the top of the unit, which had a new piece of wire going from the power inlet that I just changed out into this. And then the output was at the bottom of the unit. The output on my setup goes directly into the transfer switch that I'd previously installed. However, in most setups, that's going to go straight into your distribution center. After I made these connections and turned the generator on, it didn't work. Nothing happened. No power, no light on the front of the thing. You know, I read somewhere that there can be an issue with an open ground. I doubted that had anything to do with it since I wasn't getting any power or anything, but I did go and make me a bonding plug to try to make it work. Um, didn't work. I contacted Power Watchdog Hughes and they had one of the most pleasant customer service experiences of my life. I will give them credit for that. And they sent me on a new unit after having me check a couple of things. In truth, when I went to put the new unit in, I figured out the directions were a little bit misleading. It said the input was on the top and the input was actually on the bottom of the unit. I did send the company a message and they apologized saying that they had some instruction sheets that were printed incorrectly and that they should have all been removed. But for future notice, there is input and output labeled directly on the plastic of the unit, which I just totally didn't see or look at until after the second one didn't work. Now it worked better after I changed the input, obviously, because the power is coming in the right place. I've used this on a few different trips now. It's worked flawlessly. You know, it's a little bit more expensive than the plug-in one, but it's easy to set up. It allows you to track how much power you're using. It shows you, you can pull the app up. You can see, you know, on each leg, how much you're using. And I believe that if you have an issue where it gets fried, they actually have replacement modules that you can use to fix it without having to buy a whole new surge protector. I don't know how much those, uh, those modules are, but you know, that speaks a ton to me that you can fix it and not have to buy the whole unit again. Like I say, I had great experience with their customer service. This thing's been working great for me. You know, I don't really know how else I can tell you guys that, you know, it is kind of a, a large purchase, especially on the front end. Um, but if you're going to buy a surge protector, I would say go ahead and get something like this that that's got the whole electronic um, EMS system built into it and it works great. I love it. 
I like the look of it whenever it's powered on. It's got the little light on the bulldog that's behind the cabinet, which is good behind the cabinet because the, you know, it's pretty bright. So if my daughter sleeps in the living room here. It could be a nuisance. But we actually had a camper whose granddaughter came in. And they were looking for some marshmallows in the cabinet. And she opened the cabinet up. She she was like three years old. She said, "Look, a puppy dog." So you know, it is kind of cute, but it works great. I love it and you know that's where we are with it so stick around and we'll show you some more um, electronic updates that we've done since that time we have a whole series that we're working on here so thanks guys for following the videos and and keeping track of our journey and seeing our projects do not forget to hit that subscribe button